When did you decide, like, how did you decide what the next game was going to be? What, what, you, you had these open environments, but where, how do you take these open environments of Warhawk and say, oh, now we're going to start Hawk and there's going to be things dropping out of the sky and it's going to be red? Even in the really early stages, um, we knew that we wanted to develop a deeper universe and something that we really wanted to have its own um, voice. And it was kind of a conversation, and I think John can speak to, they really supported us to kind of take it where we wanted to as long as we were kind of bringing along those you know those elements took on Warhawk sort at the tail end there and really came to like the team at that point I think you're you're eight guys in Salt Lake we were, City we were a small and team uh, just <laughs> just hammering it out you know and, and we finished off Warhawk got it out uh, and then started doing the expansions on it had a really good time built up I think a, a great fan base for it um, and uh, it's like okay what do we do next and the guys said well we love the tech that we built uh, but we'd really love to tell, you know, a solo story. We'd like to, you know, have very distinct sides and we want something deeper. Uh, so we said, all right, go for it. I mean, when we worked on Warhawk, it was kind of a World War II alternate universe. And, you know, we really loved that at the time and it worked really well. But because it was a multiplayer game only, the pretty much the information was gleaned off of environments and the way that the characters looked. And we knew that we wanted to really bring something forward that had, like, a more fleshed out, plausible universe. As we were kind of working on that, we started talking about, well, you know, how, how do we bring this world in and have a little more life to it? And it really started to be kind of centered around what the conflict of these two factions that are fighting is. And that's really a key, and that's one of the things that you need to kind of, in order to develop a universe that feels like there's real life in it, these people aren't just fighting for no reason. We needed to come up with some good conflict. And at that point, uh, this is one of the great opportunities that we've been afforded by working with uh, Sony Santa Monica. We ended up being introduced to Ian McKaig, who, who came in, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ian McKaig, but he's a, a concept artist that's worked on a couple of movies that you may have heard of. Um, he worked on Harry Potter, and he worked on all of the Star Wars sequels. He's Never heard of them. Yeah, you know, just these little indie films. Um, he's a very, very respected, amazing guy. And we really started the conversation with him of how do we bring this kind of frontier aspect into science fiction. What intrigues me as being a Warhawk fan is that the focus so far has been on one character. Emmett Graves, this new protagonist, this single player guy. We talk about him and why did you want to move in that direction where you wanted to have like a solo story? His job is interesting um, because he's a rift salvager and what he does is he goes and he, sa he, he saves these endangered, endangered rift claims. Um, what sets him part, apart from everybody else and the reason why him and his gear man cutter do such a great job at being rift salvagers goes back 10 years before when our game actually takes place. To, uh, to actually the moment where him and his brother Logan leave the town of White Sands and to, uh, to mine their first rift mining claim. While they're doing that, they get attacked by outcast and they get infected. They, their extractor blows up, their rig explodes, is destroyed. And uh, they're exposed to rift energy. The rift regulator was developed by um, Emmett's partner, rift salvaging partner, Cutter, who is actually the guy who's um, up in the sky and it's sending these build and battle structures down to him and he's really an integral part of not only the story but of the gameplay itself you, you know you guys have seen the build and battle in the videos and build and battle is really the thing that's going to um, it's it's the big addition from Warhawk to Starhawk when I say we when we were working on the when we were working on Emmett one thing that that team of we um, we had really really close collaboration on a day-to-day -day basis with um, Ken Feldman, who really was an enormous um, influence and pretty much worked as part of the key team in developing our um, our hero for this character. And Ken was the art director of God of War, and it's another really great example of the the close collaboration that we have with the Santa Monica studio. You know, involved in working with Kratos and making what is a really, really strong main player character, and he really brought something to the table with us that, you know, allowed us to kind of see things through his eyes, and it was super, super useful. I just wanted, as I looked through what I totally blew past, I wanted to make sure, <laughs> I was sure to say that, because he was such a huge part of that. What's interesting about the Rift Energy itself is, not only is it very lucrative, but it's very dangerous. And if you're affected by this Rift Energy, you can become what we call the outcast. 
where your body starts to morph and I mean, what, what basically happens to your body at that point? The first stage is that the skeletal structure actually starts to push from the inside and it actually is like pushing the flesh and bone right up to the edge. And then after they get that past that stage, they actually become closer to what we consider our apex um, outcast and they actually start to excrete almost shells and their bone structure becomes on the outside of their bodies and this is all these reactions that they have to this rift energy and they're the ways that it actually ends up mutating and changing their form. Um, as John said we've worked on a number of titles we have RTS roots in our background and this nut that we've tried to crack you see in the industry try it over and over and over this how do you make a shooter and with strategic elements and things like that and I can say pretty damn confidently that we have cracked it and that kind of holy grail of combination of uh, light tactics uh, combined with a full-fledged shooter is definitely what Starhawk is. Would you agree with that, John? Yeah, I think, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in on part of that question. I think for, we're very sensitive to making sure that, you know, the, the Warhawk fans would see this game and see it as a spiritual successor. The flight mechanics on it are, are absolutely incredible. I mean, it has the same control, power, with the Hawk that you had uh, with the Warhawk, although I think that the guys learned a lot in the process, and, and at least for me, it's a lot more controllable, but it's fun. Uh, they took some of the uh, eh, some of the effort out of missile locks on it and right. scrubbing missiles, uh, but it's still pretty challenging, and if you can command that vehicle, uh, you definitely own the skies, which was an important part of Warhawk. It's one of the only games that allows you to, you know, to fly, to drive, to shoot, um, and it, all with equal impunity. So, uh, and the fun part about it, of course, you know, as Harvard said, is adding these tactical elements, things that, you know, just as you collect red orbs in, in God of War, you collect uh, energy off of your felled victims, and uh, you can transfer that into things that you can drop onto the battlefield, you know, walls, turrets, uh, little command centers that you can pick up more weapons in, and uh, it's pretty awesome, you know, just to be able to drop a wall on, you know, an incoming, you know, uh, barrage of guys in a jeep is, is pretty cool. In, in New York, I dropped a building on two mechs at once. Wow. wow. Nice. <laughs> the double yeah. man cake? I'm really, yeah, that's <laughs> double, double man cake. This doesn't, this is so much different. Was there a concern maybe we're putting too much in the soup, the pot's getting too full? You know, I, I, I think that from a development team standpoint, you always want to be trying things that are new and interesting and fresh, and you know that you want to continue to deliver on the stuff that people have, you know, loved from the previous game, you know, from Warhawk. It wasn't concern, it's a challenge. And I think to a lot of us, that's kind of what's fun about development, is that if, if we're just continuing to kind of make a sequel, and that was really, I think even when we came at it early, whether it was because of the universe or because we wanted to try something different in the gameplay, um, working on sequels has a tendency to kind of just slow you down a little bit. And doing something totally new and fresh is dangerous and therefore a bit exciting.